yes, I was playing in 486, you were playing on a Pentium 4, which didn't exist, I have witnesses, I don't care. Greetings, welcome to another Deckard Games YouTube stay at home thing, and well, it is raining outside, and what better day to give away the penis, yes, Finally, I'm uh, giving away uh, the penis Asus Barebone to a uh, subscriber of the channel. A PC that is working uh, uh, right here on uh, my right side, as you can see. So, uh, yeah, I asked you to uh, ask some cues so I could uh, deliver some A's. So, yeah, let's do that. Before we randomly pick the winner of our penis Barebone, Let's uh, answer some questions that you asked me to answer. I guess that makes sense. And so first question, and I'm gonna go through this by uh, chronological order, comes from Seesaw. And Seesaw asks, how did you come across such a perfect little penis? Uh, well, mate, you can uh, pretty much find um, anything on the interwebs. And uh, that's exactly what I did. I was looking for a uh, tiny little machine to give away on my uh, 1K subscribers giveaway. So yeah, I found it. I uh, purchased it from uh, this guy. So uh, yeah, I suggest you uh, do the same. Go online and uh, you can just Google for uh, a perfect little penis and uh, well, things will uh, come up. Second question comes from LittleChill73, I think that's how it pronounces, I'll leave a picture of the comments in the video. And uh, the question is, was there a jumper on the motherboard for the keyboard? Uh, it asks this because, well, the PS2 ports on the penis pair bone, I believe, are broken. None of my PS2 keyboards and mice works with it, so um, I'm gonna call them broken. I've mentioned this in the first video, I believe. And uh, answering your question, no, not that I know of. I don't see um, any jumper on the motherboard to uh, activate or deactivate the PS2 ports. So uh, yeah, I've went to all the options on the BIOS and whatnot, but um, there was nothing I could do. So uh, I'm using a USB mouse and keyboard. That's the best solution one can come up with. So. Uh, no, the answer is not that I know of. Another question comes from uh, Elio Fidu and he asks, or first he says that I want to participate and win this old piece of history to have a Voodoo 2 PCI video card to celebrate retro games. Well, uh, sir, I approve your choice of uh, 3D acceleration cards. And uh, he asks, do you ever play with the 3DFX Glide? The answer is yes, yes I do. Love me some uh, voodoo cards. If you ask me what is your um, favorite graphics card of all time, although the first voodoo cards one and two needed a 2D companion card, 3DFX is uh, legendary. On my Pentium 1 build, I use a voodoo one. So, uh, and I play some Glide games, of course, you can't, go, you can't go wrong with Glide 1X or Glide 2X, whatever. So yeah, I do play with uh, 3DFX Glide and uh, Voodoo stuff fascinates me. I really enjoy it. So uh, the answer to you, Eli Filio, is uh, yes, I do play with 3DFX Glide. Chris Tomlin asks, have you ever beaten Contra on the NES without using the Konami code? Yes, I did several times back in the day. Nowadays, I just can't do it because um, age, age never changes. So, uh, oh no, that was stupid. Age changes. Age definitely changes um, because of age. So yes, I have beaten Contra a lot of times, single player and uh, cooperative mode back in the day with a couple of friends with real human beings sitting by your side and um, and I played Contra, not uh, the uh, PAL version Probotector because, well, my first 
and only NES that I had back in the day came from North America, came from the US, and one of the games that I had was Contra. So uh, yes, I have beaten Contra uh, quite a few times without using the Konami code. It is uh, hard as balls nowadays, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Next question comes from um, Bam That Khan, I believe. And it starts by saying, can I ask you a personal question? Yes, you can. Have you ever retired the human by mistake? Yes, I did. Uh, you know, there are things that come with the job of being a um, Blade Runner that, uh, well, crap just happens. And they teach you everything in the academy, but they don't teach you how to deal with uh, a mistake like that. This is a quote from uh, Die Hard, I believe. So yes, I have retired humans by mistake. Uh, I apologize for that. But uh, well, life goes on. Uh, and he follows by, but seriously, I guess you weren't being serious. What is the story behind the channel name? I'm really curious because you're awesome. And one of my all time favorite movies is Blade Runner. Well. Once again, I approve your choice of movies. This is a question that I thought that would pop up um, immediately. And, uh, well, there are a couple of reasons. Reason number one, one of my favorite movies, or my favorite movie of, of all time, is indeed Blade Runner. I love my original dystopian stories. And my top three movies are number one, Blade Runner, number two, The Matrix, and number three, the original planet of the apes. So um, all dystopian stories and um, some original dystopian stories. I'm not really into that cliche of uh, zombies and the disease or the rise of the machines and stuff. Although the Matrix kind of is a rise of the machines, but in a very, very orgi original way. So yeah, reason number one, my favorite movie of all time is Blade Runner. Love me some uh, Blade Runner. Reason number two, back in the day, uh, when I was in high school, I believe, yeah, high school, we, uh, we, I, or me, and a few friends used to hang out on a cyber cafe, um, a place with uh, a lot of computers where you could play on LAN and stuff. And uh, that um, place was called Deckard Computers, not Deckard Games, Deckard Computers. When I um, initially signed up to YouTube, I thought of um, giving it the exact same name, Deckard Computers, in a kind of homage to uh, that uh, era. But that would limit the content of the channel a little bit. So I ended up with um, Deckard Games. I've already thought about it a couple of times on changing it to uh, Deckard Games and Computers or Deckard, Deckard Computers and Games. I think the, the other one is sounds a little bit better, Deckard Games and Computers, but um, yeah, that is the short story behind it. Blade Runner, my favorite game of all time and uh, a place where I used to hang out a lot of times, sometimes over the night, and uh, it was called Deckard Computer, so uh, yeah. Thank you very much for your uh, kind words, and uh, well, th those are the two reasons for the name of the channel. Greg Fountain asks, what is your program slash game that first comes to mind when you think of Windows 98? Windows 98 specifically. This is a hard question. I had to think about it for a while. If you asked me DOS, uh, Doom would come right up, or um, SimCity 2000, or Windows 98 with Grand Prix 2 and uh, stuff like that. Windows 98, I have to go uh, with um, Unreal Tournament. Here we have the um, big box version of uh, Unreal Tournament. And, um, well, it is a game that I played a lot back in the day, especially on LAN, and uh, yeah, uh, if I think of Windows 98, I have to think of a um, 
some kind of story involving a program or a uh, game as you mentioned and uh, this story again happened in the high school where we had a um, unreal tournament tournament over land uh, a tournament that I've lost on the finals uh, because um, well I was playing uh, on a machine uh, that was lagging all over the place and until this day the guy who won uh, which shall remain unnamed keeps uh, throwing to my face that uh, he won and I lost and uh, stuff like that you know because um, he doesn't know how to win it's not me that don't know how to lose <clears throat> I guess so uh, yeah, I was playing uh, on a computer that was lagging all over the place. I'm convinced that I was playing on a 486. Yes, I was playing a 486. You were playing on a Pentium 4, which didn't exist. I have witnesses. I don't care. We like what we like. Network asks uh, or says, absolutely amazing man. Congrats on the milestone. Thank you very much. As far as the question, what would be uh, the top three big box? DOS games you would love to have sealed, ones that you would like to display. I'm not a sealed games kind of guy, so I can't really ask a question like this. And I'm also not a big display games or systems kind of guy. The only games that I have displayed are um, SimCity. I have an altar to SimCity 2000, which I'm looking at it right now. And the rest are just on the shelves right there. Uh, I also have Final Fantasy 7 there, some Shenmue because uh, I've ran out of space. So yeah, I'm not a big uh, sealed games kind of guy and also not a display games kind of guy. I would love turning it around a little bit, big box games, DOS games, I would love to own a copy of the um, original uh, Doom and uh, that's pretty much it uh, yeah I don't know let me look at my shelves I would also love to own the SimCity 2000 scholar version the one that was uh, distributed to um, schools and teachers and stuff like that so uh, yeah it's pretty much it. Again, I'm not a sealed games kind of guy. I um, I appreciate the question. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to turn it and say that I would love to own uh, Doom, the original version of Doom, uh, and uh, a uh, SimCity 2000 Scholar Edition version. So um, yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. Two games that I would like to own. Ryan Webb says, Hi David, hello there. So my question for you is, how did your passion for old PCs in retro tech begin? This is a question that is repeated, I believe. Uh, yes, Maris Almeida asks more or less the same thing. How did my passion of old PCs begin? And I believe there was also another question here. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, João Correa also asks kind of the same question. How my uh, hobby or uh, of fro uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, how did my hobby for old computers began? So they are um, pretty much the same question. And uh, well, it began um, quite early, uh, a lot of years ago. Good old days. And I don't know, I just started messing with the machines that I had at home. Uh, uh, not exactly computers, but electronics in general. And uh, my father's, or my parents, my father's, my parents also didn't mind it very much. They wouldn't prohibit it. They wouldn't uh, stop me from doing it. If something was broken or not working properly, I'm not talking about stuff that was working. Uh, so yeah, stuff that wasn't working properly or that was um, indeed broken and didn't went to the to the trash. 
uh, they wouldn't stop me from um, opening it, from uh, disassembling it and um, messing around with it. I remember fixing up some, um, or I remember fixing a couple of radios back in the day and then um, we bought a computer and um, an Atari 2600 which I had three because the, the first two uh, blew up and I tried to repair them so uh, yeah and uh, again it was an era when um, having a uh, personal computer was like being on top of the world PCs was, were expensive as balls so uh, there was a lot of money involved and uh, and you had to take care of it it was either that or uh, hire a technician to fix your crap and uh, it was also not very cheap and not very easy uh, and the guy would have to come to your place and uh, either fix the computer at your place if it was fixable or take it to the um, to the store where you bought it and whatnot so um yeah my passion with old pcs and retro tech in general started like that by um, fixing some broken things around the house and uh, then came uh, computers and the atari 2600 and um, i don't know uh, nowadays you can be um, technologically illiterate let's call it that I don't know if I'm saying it correctly or not and pick up a, com a computer that runs Windows 10 power it on and um, do some stuff with it of course you can't go very deep into the system but you can work it and uh, back in the day with um, DOS and Windows 3.1 and stuff like that it was pretty hard to get something to work, especially games, when it comes to um, memory and stuff, you would run out of space on your hard drive, you would run out of memory a lot of times, you had to create some bootable disks just to play some games without loading DOS or full DOS into the system, so uh, yeah, you, you had to have some knowledge to uh, get things to work properly. So. Um, I guess it's I guess it's pretty much it those three things uh, fixing things around the house my parents it's my parents enabling it and uh, the knowledge that you had to uh, acquire to get uh, something to work properly were the main reasons for my passion for retro tech and uh, PCs in particular to uh, to rise so um, yeah that is uh, pretty much it and uh, it doesn't go away I love my old machines I love my old retro tech and uh, that's one of the reasons that I have a YouTube channel so next question comes from Christopher Bailey and he asks what vacuum do you use I use a vacuum that sucks that's it Christian Titko Titko asks what is your favorite laptop slash PC brand and why? The answer is if you follow my channel the international business machine uh, better known as uh, IBM IBM is just uh, fascinating stuff to me again back in the day computers were a newish kind of thing when I was growing up and uh, IBM was the brand to go to you had um, other brands, you had other machines, you had uh, white label machines, machines that you would um, assemble by parts, but um, IBM always had that um, professional feel and look to it, and um, it always felt special. One thing was to have a PC, oh I have a PC at home, one thing was to have an IBM so uh, yeah to answer your question what is my favorite laptop slash PC brand the answer is IBM and the why is uh, because IBM uh, Patrice Bouvard asks have you tried turning it off and on again 
Yes, I did. I uh, tried that quite a few times. I've turned it off. I've turned it on. And nothing changed. John Kiniston asks, did you ever, did you ever have any of the weird Cyrix or uh, a windship? Yes and no. Uh, Transmeta, no. Cyrix, yes. I've messed with some Cyrix CPUs back in the day, especially at school. And uh, windship, no. No, I haven't. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would love to uh, mess around with stuff like this. Uh, and they are not very easy to find, especially in my country, but uh, yeah. So Cyrix, definitely. Back in the day, Transmeta and uh, Windchip. I had some Windchip motherboards, I believe, but not CPUs. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, from uh, these three, Cyrix, yes I did. And the others, no I haven't. And uh, yes, I would love to. Pedro Macedo asks, why not? Windows Me or uh, Windows Millennium because it's a DOS machine if you want to play DOS you can't go with Windows Me Millennium Edition you should know this have you learned nothing from all these years? you disappoint me Spat Putop asks uh, what is that um, Cancelled Mega Drive slash Genesis game or homebrew that you would like to have on a physical cartridge to play on your Mega Drive? Um, none. Uh, all the um, cancelled Mega Drive games or Genesis, if you live in North America, that I would like to have on a cartridge, I already have. Uh, homebrews, I'm not a uh, big fan of homebrew games. I have a couple. And that's uh, pretty much um, it. But I'm gonna turn your question um, just a little bit and say that I would like to have SimCity 2000 for the Mega Drive or Genesis. It was a game that came out on the uh, Super Nintendo. And the original SimCity uh, was found just a little while ago for the NES. So yeah, as a SimCity 2000 major fan, I would love that SimCity 2000 existed for the Mega Drive or Genesis, which is not the case, but, uh, well, it is what it is. So, uh, yeah, SimCity 2000. If SimCity 2000 existed for the Mega Drive, that would be really awesome. And um, that uh, would have made my childhood even more awesome. Next question, Pedro Geronimo asks, or says, point and click games marked an error indeed what is your favorite point and click game congratulations on the white case ups and uh, keep up the good work thank you very much sir point and click my favorite point and click game is obviously the first big box game that i bought that being full throttle a heavy metal adventure by uh, tim schaefer a very cool point and click uh, adventure game very cool graphics, very cool story, great audio with the uh, special participation of Mark Hamill. So um, yeah, it is a uh, heavy metal motorcycle adventure game with uh, the main character being a guy that uh, can't walk or run because it only used to ride his motorcycle. And it is a classic from LucasArts. I could go with others, uh, I don't know, LucasArts stuffs the Monkey Island series, <coughs> sorry, Monkey Island series, the Day of the Tentacle, or Maniac Mansion series, I don't know, Grim Fandango is a great game, also from Sierra, we have some great games like the Gabriel Knight trilogy and what not, no, <coughs> from uh, all those games, again, full throttle is my uh, favorite point-and-click adventure game. You can get the remastered version, I believe, on to play on modern systems, so uh, do that. Uh, full throttle, my favorite point-and-click adventure game. 
Hugo Costa asks or first says congrats for the 1k subscribers thank you very much sir what of your retro related stuff you would take to a desert island none none because uh, unless that desert island had some uh, electricity I would take my uh, I don't know my 486 no, my 486, that would be some, there would be some limitations with that. I would take my Pentium 1 build, that you could play some DOS games and Windows 95 games. Well, Windows 95 games. So yeah, unless that desert highlight had some uh, power plant, I would take my Pentium 1. And uh, if it truly was a desert island without electricity, I would take uh, none of it because uh, all my uh, retro related stuff requires power. Unlimited power. David Costa Ventura asks, what is your favorite machine that you have built on the channel? My Pentium 1. Check out that video. I have it right here on the channel. I believe it was my first anniversary video. Yeah, yeah, yes, it was. It was a rather long one, one hour, something like that. My favorite machine from at this very moment, built on the channel, is my Pentium 1. So, uh, David Costa Ventura, check out that video. Nick Benson says, I have absolutely been enjoying your videos. Thank you very much. You have the perfect personality for this. Okay. <laughs> Hilarious and serious all the time. Thank you. I am looking forward for your next video. Thank you very much again. So for the question, if you could travel anywhere, where would you go and why? And the answer is Japan. I would go to Japan. Um, my great great grandfather, something like that from my mother's side was from uh, Japan. He was uh, Japanese. And I'm very fond of uh, Japanese culture and uh, all the architectural stuff and whatnot. Uh, I don't know. I would love to go to um, Japan. I don't know. I always felt some kind of connection with that country. Even, even before I knew that thing from my uh, great, great grandfather. So, uh, yeah, I would love to travel to Japan. It is kind of expensive and it's kind of far. Uh, I think it's like six hours on a plane or five hours stuck on a plane, which is kind of uh, scary, but whatever. So, yeah, uh, Nick Benson, I would love to go to Japan because, uh, I don't know, I feel a connection with that country. So, um, if you're watching this in Japan, your country is great. It's a pixel thing, a, um, a fellow YouTuber says, congrats for the milestone, David. Thank you, sir. You deserve it and uh, much more. Thank you again. And he's excluding himself from the giveaway because he already has a PC uh, on his uh, man cave. Cool. And uh, he asks, what are your biggest inspirations slash motivations YouTube channels or not that made you start making videos here's all the best motivations well my uh, passion for retro related stuff especially PCs especially old PCs and even more especially IBM stuff I love my old computers I'm not gonna say it again why I really enjoy old PCs. There is something different about using an old machine rather than a newish one. Inspirations. Uh, needless to say that one of my, uh, or my biggest inspiration when it comes to uh, YouTube videos is uh, LGR, Lazy Game Reviews. Uh, Clint is a huge inspiration the way he uh, makes videos. The way he talks, the way he, um, which is kind of similar to me, but or I'm similar similar to him. I don't know. It is what it is. I'm not imitating. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, inspiration. Clint from LGR, obviously. 
Um, there were others that kind of were of a, kind of were an inspiration. You don't see it as much on the channel because um, it is not my kind of thing, but I enjoy watching it, like the Angry Video Game Nerd. Um, I was uh, into the um, Metal Jesus crew. Nowadays, I'm um, not that much because um, I don't know. It is a little bit of more of the same, but uh, no disrespect. This is just my opinion, which is which is subjective. Uh, John Riggs, speaking of the Metal Jesus crew, John Riggs is a huge inspiration for repros, for uh, fixing uh, cartridges, games, and uh, stuff like that. I've sent a few things to John Riggs back in the day. Uh, check out this channel. In number one, Lazy Game Reviews, Clint, uh, great channel and, uh, and it seems like a, a great dude also. And uh, John Riggs, yeah, two channels that have nothing to do with each other, but um, well, you know. I love my PC stuff. When uh, when it comes to consoles, I love my Mega Drive stuff. And uh, so, PCs, LGR, Mega Drive or cartridge system based games, um, John Riggs. So uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. I love the 8-bit guy. I love uh, the nostalgia nerd, um, DJ Slopes, stuff like that. But uh, when it comes to inspirations i would say uh, lgr and john riggs when it comes to motivations uh, the passion for uh, old pcs harms arms asks for a uh, windows 98 era pc what is your favorite non-voodoo video card the answer is the geforce 2 series uh, that being the original geforce 2 the gts whatever or the uh, GeForce 2 MX line. I have a video about it, about how um, Nvidia kind of changed the industry when it comes to uh, 3D TNL hardware acceleration. Voodoo 2s were Voodoo 2s. GeForce 2s were all over the place. Check out that video. Uh, nowadays, I'm not very fond of uh, Nvidia stuff because of 3D effects and what happened, but um, yeah, <clears throat> a lot of respect to uh, the um, GeForce 2 series and for Nvidia for what it did back in the day, segmenting the market. And uh, yeah, the answer is the GeForce 2 series. Slayer asks or says hi, hello. What's your favorite PC operating system of all time? DOS, Windows 3.1, Windows 98 XP, Vista 7, 8, 10. Mine is DOS 622, although I don't have uh, such a machine right now. I play all DOS games on DOS Box, very cool. And congrats for the 1K subs, thank you very much. Well, first of all, DOS Box, a um, very cool solution to play old DOS games on your modern machine. I have nothing, absolutely nothing against DOS emulation. Um, it works and it's great. Uh, favorite operating system? Don't really have a favorite one. If I had to pick something, I would go with my previous answer when what retro PC I would take to a desert island. And I've set my Pentium 1 because DOS and Windows 95. DOS and Windows 95 cover cover a lot and a lot of games so um, I would be pretty much happy with those two uh, let's pretend that I would uh, uh, every other operating system would go away if I had to choose two to keep and to answer your question I would go with DOS and uh, with uh, Windows 98 uh, better 95 DOS and Windows 95 and uh, I could live with that, yeah. So, uh, favorite operating systems, DOS, the latest version, 622, why not? And uh, Windows 95. 
José Silva asks, uh, what is the exact amount of games that you own for consoles and uh, PCs? I don't have the um, exact number because I don't keep my uh, database up to date on a daily basis, but it's close to 1300. So uh, yeah, I have close to 1300 games total, consoles and PCs, and um, I think I have enough. I have um, moved recently, so I had to move all the crap from one home to another, and uh, I think I have enough, and um, I will uh, refrain myself and uh, buy uh, a lot of less stuff from uh, now on. And uh, Ricardo Magalhães says, hey, hello, dude, do you have an Amiga or a PC? Amiga? No, I don't. I am looking for one for a lot of time. I've um, already talked about this a few times to my fellow YouTuber Pedro from the channel It's a Pixel Thing. I've already said that I have to find an Amiga, but um, I haven't found one at a decent price, obviously. Do I have a PC? Yes, I have a PC. I have a lot of PCs. And um, yeah, Amiga, no. PC, of course. Retro Game Force asks: Is uh, Sergio Conceição the right coach for Porto? What? This is a um, tech, old PCs, games related channel. This is not a sports channel, dude. Is Sergio Conceição the right coach for Porto? For those who don't know Porto, Porto is the best football club in Portugal. Uh, two times European champion, two times world champion. And we are talking about football, the real football, not soccer. The one that you play with a ball, with a uh, spherical ball, and with your feet, not with a melon, and with your hands. Therefore, the word football. So, yeah, not answering that question. Mianski asks if you could only play one game, one game forever, what would it be? The answer is simple. If you want to play one game forever, it might, it might as well be a game without an ending. If you play a game with an end, you are playing the same game all over again. It is the same way to get to that end. So I would choose SimCity 2000, a game without an end, a game that you can play as you wish. You want to, um, I don't know, build that is the dictator, do as you will. You want uh, to invest in industrial zones, do it. You want um, tall buildings, why not? You want uh, small houses, sure. So uh, yeah, SimCity 2000, a game without an end, a game without a purpose, and um, it is uh, the best PC game of all time, so uh, one game and one game only, forever, SimCity 2000. Watch the Moss asks, uh, and he has a pretty cool uh, icon or avatar uh, from the uh, IT guy, so uh, watch that show. First time watcher, thank you. I'll watch you just for your voice. Okay, I appreciate that. Have you ever worked for Packard Bell or technology type business back in the day when they were a big thing? As a technician, Packard Bell paid for a few trips, which was nice when I was young, for training and loved them more for it. No, I haven't. I have not worked for any of the major computer or uh, technology companies I would have loved to but um, when they were really big I was kind of in the age of started to working to working started to work so uh, yeah the answer is no I would love to and uh, I would love to know more about your experiences because uh, I don't know I like it. 
I like stuff like that. So yeah, the answer is no. No, I haven't. I haven't worked for Packard Bell or any other major brand. I would have loved to. I would love to still today. I would love to work to, for, for IBM, even, even though they are not the same company they were, I don't know, 15 years ago, two decades. But uh, yeah, no, I haven't, I'm sorry. And uh, let me know more about your experiences. Andre Paixão asks, or if it says, hey, hello, dude, I love those bare bones. Well, you came to the right channel. I would love to own it. Okay. Question, what is your take on the trend of games to be all about online competition? I like Rocket League to have some fun with friends. As they start to try and make it competitive, it takes away the fun from it. I absolutely agree with you. 100%. I'm not a um, big multiplayer competitive um, player kind of guy. I um, enjoy video games either by myself or to be played with a, um, some real friends by your side. And Rocket League is a very cool example. I remember playing back in the day, as I've mentioned, uh, games like Unreal Tournament, uh, Quick 3 Arena, StarCraft, Warcraft 2, games like that, all over land, but um, with real human beings on the same room. Sometimes we were 10, 15 guys playing at the same time. And um, yeah, and I believe I believe time changes and um, the industry changes with time. The purpose also changes. Um, money speaks louder than um, anything else so um yeah this the the new trend which is not very new of online competitive multiplayer games uh, i don't know what to say it is what it is uh, I'm, I'm not the one to judge if you like video games like that go ahead and enjoy it i doesn't make any difference to me but um yeah i like old games that you can play with real human beings by your side. I don't like the competitive side of it. I like the fun side of video games. So uh, yeah, Andre Paixão, I uh, again absolutely agree with you uh, 100%. Uh, games are supposed to be fun. Games are supposed to be played with, uh, with friends and uh, having some laughs, screwing around with the games stuff like that sometimes getting angry with each other because of the video game because of the competitive side of the video game and uh, at the end all is well so uh, yeah thank you for the question so final question comes from uh, burn penguin i hope you're right burn penguin and uh, he asks what is your favorite no what is the favorite build of yours Again, my Pentium 1. It is my, uh, at this date, it is my favorite build. I'm planning on a uh, future build. A Windows XP machine, 486. A special, very special, 3DFX build. So stay tuned for that if you like uh, old PC builds. So uh, answering the question again, my favorite build at the moment it is my Pentium one again it was a video celebrating the fast first anniversary on uh, YouTube so uh, check out that video and uh, hope you enjoy it so when these were the questions that um, I was questioned about and uh, hope you enjoy the answers if you uh, want uh, other questions to be answered leave it in the comment section down below and uh, without further ado well we are also here to pick the winner of the penis barebone, which will be leaving my house. I will miss you, old friend. You will be missed. We had some good times together. Let's find him a new owner. And so here we have the video, the 1K subscribers video, with one person that doesn't like it, I know who you are and uh, I think you're beautiful. 
And here we have uh, all the absolutely nice folks that uh, decided to participate in the giveaway. So yeah, let's just, um, as usual, copy the link of my video. And we are going to use the same site that I've been using since forever, which is this one. Let's paste that same link. Filter our duplicate users. We want things to be fair. So uh, yeah, we are set to go. Let's click start. Drum roll. And the winner of the penis is Wicked Gamer and uh, Collector. So uh, yeah. Congratulations to Wicked Gamer and uh, Collector on winning the uh, 1K subscribers giveaway. You will be getting a uh, penis on your mail. And there it is once again. Congratulations to Wicked Game and Collector on winning the 1K subscribers giveaway. You will be getting the Asus Penis Barebone by Deckard Games, which is running here on my site. And uh, as is a tradition here on the channel, a winner is you. Please, please stay in touch with me uh, to um, let me know your uh, personal data, your personal information, so I can ship the PC penis barebone thing to you. Hope you enjoy it. And if you didn't win, well, there will be more giveaways in the future. You know, I'm uh, always giving away stuff. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, thank you very much for um, all the very nice questions that you uh, questioned me about it. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably do another one of these in the future. So, thank you very much for watching this. Leave a thumbs up in this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Remember that you can um, always follow me on the... Uh, social media networks that exist on your device that connects to the um, interwebs since uh, well it's all that we have right now we are locked at home so yeah might as well follow each other on social media and uh, watch some uh, Decker games videos because that's a thing that you do when you are locked at home yeah, as always, thank you very much for watching this, and until my next video, take care.